Hello Lava friends, here's what's new in your favorite PHP framework. Let's go! First, there was an update on the collection select method, which I showed you last week. So last time I showed an example similar to this, where we have this users array of arrays with some users from the level team like Joe, uh, role is a def, and so on, and we were making collection of it, and then we're using the new select method, um, where we can provide an array to just select specific columns, in this case the name and the role, and you can see this is working, we also get an array, but now only with this specific columns. So this is pretty cool, it also works with just one of them, which, um, yeah, is pretty nice. But now we're trying out something new which, were, which was not working the last time. So what this is, is we are using an eloquent collection. And we get one back, for example, if I grab here all of the users. Let's get an array to see that we get some results back. Yes, we do. But now we can also chain here the select method and define the columns that we want to see. So we all know the plug method where we can just provide one column, but here we can provide an array of columns. Let's start with just the email. You can see this works for me and for Tim. And now let's also add maybe the name. And you can see, hopefully, that this is also working. Yes, it does. So now this also works on Eloquent Collection, which is pretty cool for you to use. This felt like this one thing that was missing for this feature. So thank you, Koremi, for adding this. Next, we have two new methods on the enum validation rule. So I'm here inside a test for creating a podcast. And what we're doing here is we're making a post request to a specific endpoint. We're providing some data like the title and the status, which is an enum published. We can also check this right out. We have a draft published and archived statuses. And then we're making sure that it is created so that we get a specific response code back. And if we run this, you can see this is working. If we take a look now at the route where we have defined this, and then also the controller, you can see here we are validating the data that we get. And first we are validating the title, and then here we're using a rule for enums. And now what we can do is we can add the accept or only method to check against specific um, items from our enums. So for example, in this case, maybe let's say we only allow the publish status. Let's go back to our test. Let's run this. This should still pass. It does because that's what we've provided to publish status. But now if we change this to a draft, you can see this is not working anymore because the status is invalid. So this is pretty cool that we can use now those two new methods on the enum rule only and accept for you to use. Thank you, Anton. You can now also manually increase the rate limit amount. Let me show you. So I have here a route defined for getting some customers in this example, and we are getting the locked in users. And now I'm using the rate limiter facade to check if we have made too many attempts. And here I provide that five is the maximum per minute. Then I return this string here, too many attempts. And then later down after this, I am making a hit. So this means this increases the amount so that when we have five, then this is not allowed anymore and we see our too many attempts string. All right, now in the browser, when I refresh this, you can see we get some results here. Let's now try this a couple of times. One, two, three, four, and five. And you can see now we get our string too many attempts back because we just tried, yeah, too often to hit this endpoint. So what is new now is instead of the hit method, we can also use the increment. And the difference here is that we can define a specific amount. So let's say we don't want to increase it just by one, that's maybe just with three. So this means now we don't have as many options as before because it gets incremented by three. Let's try it out in the browser. But first we need to um, clear the cache to be sure. Let's try it out. So one, two, three, and yeah, too many attempts now already because we used the increment method here which is pretty cool. So now you can define by how much you want to um, increment the limit because sometimes it's just one, but sometimes it's more and you can define it now yourself. Thank you, Sebastian. We also support the new MySQL feature called lateral join. Never heard of it before? You are not alone. Let me try to explain it. 
So here in Tinkerwell, I have a join between my customers table and my sales table. And what I would like to see is from the customers table, I like to see the name. So like myself and from the sales table, I want to see the product that I bought. And we can do this with a join. And then we're checking customers ID against the sales customer ID. If we run this, of course, we will see some results here from our joint tables. And you can see I bought a desk. I also bought a display. I also bought a laptop. So yeah, everything from my studio. This is nice. And later down, Chess, of course, bought a Lamborghini. She can and also a Lambo shirt. All right, so this works, but now something new that we can use, which is called a lateral join. Let me show you what this does. All right, so first, um, the beginning looks the same. We have our customer and we select the name and the product. But now we're calling this join lateral method. And now it's quite different here because now inside here, we are saying that we want all the sales with some specific columns that match. So our match now is inside this method here, not outside anymore. Then we have an order and we also limit this by three, which is pretty cool because this is not possible if you do this just with a join. Because limits not work like that, because with a join you get all the results that match a specific condition. So if you run this, you can see we get still some results, but let's limit it to two. So we should see here two items here by me, my latest purchases, yes we do, and two by Chess. Let's limit it by one. So let's see that we also only get one from Chess and you can see this is also working. So this is now pretty cool because this now works a little bit similar like for each loop. Thank you to PS Petri for telling me about this. So inside our customers, we are now making this kind of subquery here where we're checking for every customer, we also check the sale and if this is given for a specific condition and then we can also limit it, which is pretty cool. Of course, please check out the documentation for more infos. Thank you, Michael. This sums it up for this week. Let me know about your favorite features in the comments and see you the next time. Bye.